It's me, I'm tiny. I'm up here in my code. Oh, it's over here. This is the array. Oh, it's a nice array. I'm going to be here talking about reduce. So I reduced myself to a very small person, but I am going to uh, uh, un unreduce myself back to my normal size to talk about reduce. That, that was totally worth doing, <laughs> wasting the first 30 seconds of this video for that bit of shtick. Okay, um, so reduce. This is a really interesting and kind of weird and quirky higher order functions for arrays. And what, it, what it's generally, the reason why it's called reduced is let's say I have an array and I want to take this array and I want to just, I want to find out the essence of the array as a whole. I want to reduce it into one thing. So that's what this does. Now there's lots of ways, reasons why you might want to do this, but I think probably the simplest scenario to start with is oh, I have an array and I want to add up all the numbers in it, or I want to average all the numbers in it. So let's look at how that works with reduce. Right? First let's actually do that without reduce, just to, just to kind of like get the hang of things here. So if I wasn't using reduce, I would say for let i equal zero, i is less than vowels.length, i plus plus, and I would have a variable like let sum equal zero, and I would say sum plus equal vowels index i, and then I would say console.log sum, and I would refresh up here, and we could see, there we go, all those numbers add up to 21. <clears throat> now, if you've been paying attention to my ES6 videos, of which this is in a playlist, I could also say for let val of vowels. So this is kind of like a kind of like a for each style loop. There is actually something called for each in JavaScript with a little bit different. Also a higher order function that you can pass. Anyway, but um, this is saying every val inside of vals, and oh, of course now I don't have that index, I would just do this, add them all up together. So this is reducing it a little bit, reducing the code a little bit, and if I hit refresh, I've also got 21. All right, so let's look at how this reduce function works. And actually, before I act, write the code, let me come down here and let me go and look at the documentation. So I'm gonna look at reduce. So reduce is a function that has, that takes two arguments. And there's a way of doing it with one argument, which I will get to at some point, an accumulator and a current value. What does that mean, accumulator and a current value? Accumulator and a current value. So <clears throat> this is not, reduce takes a function, it's a higher order function. So let's write a function that has both a uh, an accumulator and a value. So I'm going to get rid of this code and I'm going to say function and I'm going to use ACC for short for accumulator and val for value. And I'm going to say return accumulator plus value. Hmm. 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 Okay. Return accumulator plus value. I think this is right. Oh, and let me name this called, I'm going to call this sum. Now I'm going to say vals.reduce sum. And I'm going to say let result answer equal that. And I'm going to say console.log answer. And I realize I kind of just typed this out and I haven't really explained it yet. Because to be honest, I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing just yet. But hopefully this is going to make sense that I can back, it's going to work and then I can back up and explain it. Let's see. Ah, I got the answer 21. Okay, so what does this do? Well, do you remember when I, ah, let's, let me go back to my old code. I'm gonna just quickly copy this. I'm gonna go back to here. What if I actually called this ACC short for accumulator and then said ACC plus equal val? Well, the accumulator starts with zero and then every val is added to it over and over again. <clears throat> this is the idea of reduce. You give it something that's going to persist over time as it's looping through ele every element of the array, and then you can act on that thing that's persisting and the actual value of the array. Now, in this case, to, um, to add them both together, all I want to do, uh, to add a sum, I just want this accumulator to always persist and just keep having each val added to it. Now, what's the weird thing about this is, what's the value of accumulator? Like, what does it start with? Well, interestingly enough, let's see if we can determine. I'm going to add console.log accumulator in here. And I'm probably going to need a bit more room in my console, so I'm going to do that. Look at that. 5, 9, 10, 12, 21. Interestingly enough, the first time I ran the code, the accumulator's value was 5. This is because I did not provide an initial value for the accumulator. 
So if you do not provide an initial value for the accumulator, it will, by default, be the first thing in the array, which is 5. Notice now, if in here I say reduce sum, and then I pass a second, a second argument. So sum is this function, that's, the, that's what I'm passing to reduce, but there's an optional second argument, which is referred to as the initial value. So if I want the initial value of accumulator to be 0, I didn't have to do it for this problem that I'm solving, but I could do that here. Now I'm going to hit refresh. And oh, and let's look at what it did. Notice that it started at zero. So I have an extra console log. It, did actually, it didn't actually bother to run it with the first value because it just started accumulator as that value but the previous time, but now it's doing that. So just to be, make it clear, if I say 10, right, if I start accumulator at 10, can take this out. What should the, think about pause and think about what am I going to see in the console? Refresh. 31, right? Because I added all the numbers starting with 10. Okay. How can I condense this now? Well, first of all, I can use the arrow syntax. I can get rid of the word function. I don't need it to be named. And it's one line of code, so I don't need the curly brackets, and I don't need the return. So this actually can now go right here. And this is now, I'm going to give myself a little more space. This is the full line of code. I can say, hey, take this array and reduce it with an accumulator of a starting value of 10, and for each value, add that value to the accumulator. OK, so in this case, though, if I really just want to calculate the sum, which I can call this sum, I don't want to start with 10, so I'm going to do this. And just to be aware, just to say it again, this is very important, especially once you start having like arrays of objects and other things, the accumulator, if you don't give it an initial value, is not starting with like a default value of 0. It's actually starting with whatever the first element of the array is. So if you ever see this code, and I'm going to do this soon enough in a future video, where this is an array of particles, I might want to do something to say, calculate the average, the centroid of all those particles. I'm going to have to be clever about how I think about doing this. OK, now, uh, the chat gave me a good suggestion, which would be to find the maximum or the minimum of, and of course there is, I think, in P5 I know as a min and max function, there's probably a native JavaScript one as well, but let's try to do that. Let's try to find the minimum and maximum using reduce. So let's, I'm going to write it out the long-winded way because this helps me. I'm going to say find max. And actually, this is great because this relates to some of my uh, neural network videos that I've been making, um, where I'm, I'm going to have an accumulator and a value. OK. Now, if value is greater than accumulator, accumulator should equal value, right? Accumulator doesn't have to just be a thing that you're adding up together. You're saying it's just a variable that's going to persist while I'm going over the whole array. And value is each one. So if that current value is greater than whatever the accumulator is, then I'm going to get, um, then accumulator should equal that value. And then, I guess, do I, want to do I need to return the accumulator? Or does that, by definition, no, yes, I need to return the accumulator, I think. So let's see. <laughs> let's take a look at this. So let's say let biggest equal vals dot reduce find max. All right, so and then uh, let's console.log biggest. Nine. That's the Now, let's put nine in the middle because just to be sure that it's really working because it was the last element. Nine. It still worked. So I definitely need to, and if I take out this return accumulator, yeah, I don't get it. So of course I need to return that, right? Because the whole point is I am going to return at the end. It's kind of, you sort of get into it being assumed that value that persisted over the whole time. Now, how can I reduce this? So first of all, I can make this, as we know, an arrow function. So let's actually do this. And I'm going to put this here now into here. So this works. This is a little bit awkward looking, but this is definitely kind of functional style. I'm going to reduce. The, I have an accumulator and a value. I'm using the arrow syntax and running this code. Let's make sure this still works. 
I get nine. Now, I could probably use, I think it's called a ternary operator if I wanted to be this crazy person who is, um, crazy person who is reducing, um, who is like, uh, so if I want to be this crazy person who's like always trying to get the code to be shorter and shorter and shorter, let's try to remind ourselves what a ternary operator is. So, but this, okay, so this is an if statement. If A is greater than B, B equals A. But I could also sort of think of this as if A is greater than B, I might say like return, right? If it's greater, A is greater than B, then A is the, the new bigger value. Otherwise, return B is the new bigger value. So this kind of statement can be written in with a ternary op operator by saying question mark a colon B. So I can get rid of, I, I don't like what I'm doing today. I can get rid of this if and these returns and I basically have evaluate this Boolean expression. If it's true, here we got A. If it's false, here we got B. So in theory, I believe that I could, let's change these actually to A and B, which is fine. Accumulator and value is kind of useful, but I could say uh, A greater than B colon, oh no, question mark, uh, A colon B. I gotta give myself a lot more room here. Did I get this right? Oh, it's right. Let's look at this. Is this really right? Oh my goodness, ugh, oh, this really freaks me out, but it's okay, it's okay, everything's gonna be okay. I got too many mouse things everywhere. All right, let's think about this again. I'm taking an array, a is the, is the accumulator, B is the value. If value, I, yeah, I, it's funny because I was thinking about it the other way around because I think what I want to do is say, if the value is greater than the accumulator, then return the value, otherwise return the accumulator. They're really the same thing. But, um, so let's see if this works. I should get nine. Nine, I still got nine. So the idea here is that I'm saying reduce this array. Have a, val have a variable called A, the accumulator, that it persists over time, and then look at every value B in the array. Start with five. If B, if, it's va if four is bigger than five, that's your new accumulator. If nine is bigger than five, that's your new accumulator, which it is. If two is, oh, no, is two bigger than nine? No, is one bigger than nine? No, I'm left with nine. So, ah! Hopefully this is kind of helping you. These are two scenarios now. We've now seen where this is like a nice little snippet of code to find the largest value in an array. And this is a nice little snippet of code, if I put it back, to find the sum of all the values in the array. And both of these, the initial value is, is, is assumed. For example, just to be clear about this, what if I put 20 here? If I put 20 here, if the accumulator starts as 20, what am I gonna see? 20, and then the sum is 21, because, right? So it's gonna be 20, because none of the numbers are bigger than 20. So this could also be a test, like, hey, find me the maximum value in the array, but if nothing is bigger than 20, just stick with 20. So, but if I said, if I said eight here, I'm gonna get nine, right? So this initial value is assumed to always start with five, but unless you explicitly initialize it as something else as the second argument to the reduce function. <gasps> okay. So, boy, I don't know how I feel about these functions, but at least I've covered them. I've tried to explain them. You should let me know in the comments, because I don't know, I felt pretty good about map. I felt like if you were watching that video, it made sense, you could find use of it. This reduce one is really confusing and it takes a lot of practice, especially as we like condense it shorter and shorter with the arrow function. So let me know how that goes. I, I'm going to use it with a particle system um, in a future video that'll hopefully be linked from here somehow in a magical way. Um, so that might give you more of a sense as you see it uh, used in a practical scenario where you're actually doing some graphics and animation. So um, next video, I will talk about filter.